Turns out Vercel's AI SDK version 5 is a huge upgrade with new polished APIs and features. So let's try it out in TanStack Start and add to our existing chat example the ability to do speech transcription, so you'll be able to talk to the AI as well as text-to-speech, so you'll be able to hear what the AI has to say in response. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's create our app. To do that, I'm going to use Create Start App, the latest version. I'm going to call this Tanstack AI version 5. Of course, all this code available to you for free on GitHub and the link in the description right down below. The really important thing I'm going to do is right at the end here, I'm going to add the Tanstack chat example, and that is going to set up a full AI chat example. And I'm just going to walk you through that, and then we're going to go and add the really cool speech transcription and text-to-speech stuff that's available on version 5. So we'll get to see what the changes are with version 5, and then get into these awesome new features. All right, let's bring it up in our editor. Now, the only thing you need to do at this point is make sure that your environment variables are set properly. I already have an anthropic environment variable set, so I'm just gonna comment that out. But if you don't have that globally set like I do, then go and add it to your env local. Later on, as we do the speech transcription stuff, as well as the text-to-speech stuff, we'll be using OpenAI for that, so you'll have to have an OpenAI API key as well. All right, well, that done, let's go and bring it up. All right, here we are on localhost 3000, pretty cool example, so let's go to our chat and say hello. And there we go, we've got it talking to Claude. So the example here is actually a guitar example. So we've got a bunch of guitars in our guitar collection. You can see the guitars over here. They're really cool, they're fake, but they're really cool. And we could say, for example, please recommend an acoustic guitar. Now it's using tools to go and access our database of guitars. It's gone through and grabbed the database and now it's recommending a guitar. That recommendation of a guitar is in itself a tool. So that's how we're putting in that card in there. So there's two different tool invocations in this one request. One is to get the database of guitars and then another after the AI has picked out which one it would want to recommend to us that it then sends back a tool invocation saying, please recommend this guitar, which we then show as a guitar card. And this is right out of the box, y'all. You, you get this, all you have to do is run that one command, add your API key, and this is what you get. How cool is that? By the way, thank you to the Sentry folks for helping build the original version of this. We've obviously added and maintained and extended it a lot, but it was great that they had the first version of this going. So, okay, well, let's go take a look at how this is actually running. So let's start from the back end and go to the front end. On the back end, we've got API demo chat. All right, so let's start down here. We're creating a API endpoint route, and we're gonna sit on post, and the first thing we're gonna do is get back the messages from the JSON object. We're gonna get our tools, we'll take a look at that in a second, but then we're gonna use the stream text function from that AI library. We're gonna then go and connect it to our anthropic model. We're gonna convert the UI messages to the model messages. Now, this is a big deal when it came to V5. So V5 really cleans up this differential between UI messages, the structure of the messages that we have in our chat history that we're gonna to present to the UI, and then what we're gonna actually send to the model. And so here we're actually taking UI messages, which we'll get back from the request.json, and we're converting them into model messages. So it, V5 has done a much better job at differentiating these two things. Another big change here is that instead of having max steps, which is what we had before, which was the number of tool invocations the model could do independently before it said, whoa, I, I'm kind of getting off course here. We now have this new stop when functionality, and we can say at this point, you know, stop when you've done five different tool invocations, but you can use different criteria for when you want it to stop. So you don't have to do it just raw based on the number of tool invocations. And then to output this, we use this two UI message stream response. And that again is gonna take those model messages and convert those to UI messages as they go back out to the UI. And as you can see, this is all super compatible with TanStack Star. We're turning a raw streamed response out of here and that is just perfect for TanStack Start. So really easy integration with TanStack Start, no hacking required. Of course, over the top here, we got our system prompt. It talks about the two tools that we have. So let's go take a look at those tools. So we'll go over here to our utils directory and we've got our tools. Now let's just go get rid of the MCP stuff. Let's sort of in there, comment it out just so you can have access to it later if you want it. 
So we see two simple tools here, get guitars and recommend guitars, both defined with tool. Nothing new there except for the parameters field has now changed to input schema. There's also output schema if you want to do that. We got this UI tool, recommend guitar. That's how the AI tells us that it wants to put a specific guitar card up so people can buy that guitar. And in this case, all we want to do is just marshal its input into the output. So we're just going to take that ID and just make that the output of this particular tool. And then as we're rendering the tool invocations, then we look to see the output of this guitar recommending tool call, and then we format it properly. So let's go take a look at how we're doing this on the UI side. So the relevant page is under routes example chat. There's a lot of stuff in here, but we'll start down at chat page, which is the page wrapper and the upgraded use chat hook. So, so that AI SDK has always had to use chat hook, but now the API has shifted a little bit. So it no longer tracks the input for you. It used to go and track the input field. Now you have to do that yourself. So on line 127, we can see that we're actually using an use state to track that input. The other big change with this use chat hook is where it used to just fetch from slash API slash chat all on its own. And all you can do is just change what the URL of what the endpoint was. Now there's this transport mechanism and you get to define what kind of transport you want. If you still want to use that fetch transport and you want to call the API endpoint, as we do, then you use this default chat transport and you get the API route. But you can decide what kind of transport you want. You could call server functions or in the case of OpenAI, you can call it locally on the client. There's all kinds of different transports you can use. All right, let's talk about formatting messages, which we do in the messages component. So this messages component takes a messages property, which is an array of those UI messages. Again, V5 is doing a really good job at disambiguating UI messages versus model messages. So here we're taking UI messages and then we are formatting them. So we're going to map through those messages and get back the ID of the message as well as the role. So that would be assistant or user and then the new parts of the message. So now everything is modeled as parts, including the text of the response. So here you can see as we iterate through parts, we see if the type of the part is text. And if it is, then we just use markdown on that. But we can also see if the type is a tool call. In this case, it would be tool dash and then the tool name. I'm not super excited about that, but it is what it is. And that's what we have to work with. So we also get the state of the tool call saying, in this case, the output is available, checking for that. And we're going to see if we have an ID. And if we do, then we put in our cool guitar recommendation with the output, which is the ID. And that maps to the output coming back out here of recommend guitar. So if, as an example, you had some more database calls or things like that that you wanted to do inside this recommended guitar to add more metadata around the output there, that's what you would do inside that execute. You get an ID from the LLM, you do some database calls, get some more data, and you pass that back as the output payload, and then pass that to the card over in the UI. There is one more change with AI SDK 5, and that's so you get this new send message function coming out of use chat. That's when you actually want to send the message to whatever transport you're using. In this case, we invoke that on the send message on the key down. In the older version, it was bound into form posts, and I, I really prefer this method. All right, let's have some fun and go multimedia with this. So I'm going to go over and take a look at the transcription API from the AI SDK version 5. You can see that it is an experimental feature, but I like experimental features. So let's go back to front and build ourselves a full transcription service so we can just talk to our AI. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an API route that's going to take the audio data and call that transcription function called API transcribe. And that's going to bring in OpenAI from AI SDK OpenAI. We don't have that, so let's go bring it in. I'm also going to bring in this React Media Recorder. That's going to help us handle you know, the microphone and all that. Okay, so I got that. So this API route is going to take a post with form data. So as part of that form data, we're going to get a file. That's going to be an audio file. We're then going to grab all the data out of that audio file as a U8 int array. And then we're going to call the AI SDK's experimental transcribe function and use the OpenAI transcription service of Whisper One, so the Whisper model. And we're going to give it that audio buffer. And then we're going to get back from that the text as well as the language and the duration. OK, so what do we do with that? I'm going to wrap that in a hook. So I'm going to create a new directory called hooks. And in there, I'll put a file called use transcribe. 
that use transcribe hook will primarily be repping the use React Media Recorder hook from React Media Recorder. That just reduces a lot of code and transforms of taking raw audio data and encoding it as a wave, which is what we need. The sailing part here is we get back start recording and stop recording from that hook. And then when we stop, we then call this transcribe audio function. That transcribe audio function is where we create the form data. We bring in that audio blob, call it audio, and then we run that fetch that posts it off to the server. And then we get back the response JSON. And if we get back any text, we call on transcribe, which we take as a parameter to use transcribe. Now that we have our API and our hook, let's go wrap a button around it. So I'm gonna go over here into components and create a transcribe button. So we're gonna use that use transcribe hook that we just created and then just wrap it in a button. That button will start and stop the recording and we pass through on transcribe, which we're gonna pa pass back to the host. So let's go bring that into our chat. So go over to our example chat and then down the bottom here, we've got our text area. I'm gonna bring in our transcribe button and say, that when we've got the on transcribe, meaning we've got some new text, we're just gonna add that on to the existing input text. All right, let's give it a go. All right, we got our button there, let's try it out. Say hello. Oh, nice, awesome. So now we can talk to our AI, how cool is that? All right, now let's do the inverse, let's do speech. So here is the speech API, again, an experimental feature, but again, we like experimental features. So again, we're gonna use OpenAI for this, but we're gonna use the TTS1 model, which is gonna take any text and turn it into speech. And we get to choose the voice. We'll just use Alloy to start, but pretty cool, right? So let's give it a go. So again, we'll start from back to front. I'll call this one slash API slash TTS. It'll take one piece of text as input and then run a generate speech function that we get back from the AI SDK. Again, we'll use voice Alloy, but you can use whatever you want. But we get back to that as an MP3 and a U8 int array. So we return that as well as some headers that say that we're getting back an audio MPEG and the size of it. And that's all we really need to do. Next up, we'll create another hook. We'll call that use text to speech. That hook is going to return a function called convert text to speech, as well as a Boolean saying with if we're currently generating speech, takes a text string, calls our API that we just created, it gets back the blob from the fetch and creates a new audio element. And then it plays the audio element. And that's it. So to use that hook, we'll create a new text-to-speech button. We'll bring in that text-to-speech hook that we just created, and then we'll wrap it in a button. And we'll also take as a property text. So when you click on the button, then we'll use that convert text-to-speech that we get from that hook, and we'll convert the text-to-speech. All right, last up, let's bring it into the page. So let's go take a look at where we're formatting messages. So we've got some text, which we do right here, right after the markdown, we'll call our TTS button. We'll bring all the text together into one big piece of text and let's give it a go. All right, let's give it a try. Hello, I'm here to help you with guitars. I can help you browse our selection of guitars or provide personalized recommendations. Would you like to? One, see all available guitars in our collection. Two, get a personalized guitar recommendation just let me know what you'd like to do and I'll be happy to assist you. Nice. All right, well, of course, all this code available to you on GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. If you're gonna use the AI SDK version five, talk to me about it in the comments. I would love to hear what you're using it for. If you're gonna use it on Tanstack Start, let me know in the comments right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.